Hi Cat, this is my wrap up for the months of September, October and November. I read nine books in these past three months, so that's averaging three a month, which doesn't sound like a lot. But if you watched my bi-monthly media wrap up, then you know I watched a lot of TV. So let's jump right into it. First up is of course, Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff. I gave this four stars. This was a ride and I swore so many times. As usual, I went to the launch of this Jay Kristoff book and got to hear him speak about it. And I really want to read those two alternate endings that he wrote because this did not end the way I thought it was going to. And funny story. So in this book, you find out who the narrator of the entire story is because it's never said in book one or two. So I didn't realize it until after I had read this, but Pierre, as in Nevernight series Pierre, told me who the narrator was before I read the book. So Pierre Chami and I were talking about the Nevernight web series, which if you haven't watched it yet, go watch it after you've watched this video. And we were talking about the series and Pierre said something about the narrator and I was like, oh cool, didn't think much of it. And this was the day after the Dark Dawn launch. And I didn't realize it then, but that was a spoiler. But the reveal in the book itself was really cool anyway. So the series is beautifully written and you know it's really good when you're cheering on your main character to kill someone. Next up is The Shrike and the Shadows by Chantel Gaudry and A.M. Wright and I gave this three stars. This one is being released in March by Parliament House Press and I was given an advanced digital copy because I was part of the cover reveal. It's a Hansel and Gretel retelling and it's super dark. The twins are kicked out of their village and into the forest and the Shrike lives in the forest and she's this like evil scary witch thing and you do not want to mess with her or even just go near her. But also in the woods they meet a werewolf and he is it was enjoyable and I do want to read the sequel. There were a few things I was confused by though, and just some inconsistencies, but this was an advanced copy so they might be fixed by the final version. And then we have Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I love this book. I love it so much. I gave it five stars. I just fucking love this book. If you don't know, it's a new adult book about the son of the American president and the British royal prince and they hate each other, but then they fall in love. It's just so damn good. I had a smile on my face like 98% of the time. The other 2% was like when drama had to happen. I love the main characters and the side characters and the sisters and best friends are amazing. It's so easy to read and I need the movie rom-com adaption, please. And I'm seriously down to play either Nora or B. so. Then I have Monuments by Will Kostakis and I gave this three stars. This one was a YA room book of the month and it was Will's first fantasy. I have read The Psychics by Will Kostakis and he's got two other contemporary books as well and Will is just a great person overall and he's hilarious in real life. I do prefer Will's contemporary writing but this is his first fantasy so maybe he will grow into it. This is a YA, most of the characters are 17 but there is one character who is 18 so he could be in a new adult story. But it just read like a middle grade, like it's definitely a Percy Jackson type of story. Our main character finds a secret tomb under a school which houses a god and then he gets wrapped up in this plot to find the other gods and goddesses. The characters are like 17 which is why they could run around all night and their parents not worry about them too much but it just, it read like something like 11 year old Percy Jackson would do. It is a quick read and it's perfect for like the 12 year old in your life. Switching gears just a little bit here and we have Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. I gave this four stars and this is the ARC copy which is why you can't really see the words on it. This is now my favorite Leigh Bardugo book and it's adult fantasy, but the characters are in their early 20s so it could be new adult. Oh my God, that rain. <sighs> I wonder how much of the rain the camera is picking up. The mystery just had me sitting there being like, I need to know. Alex is great and I loved the setting of Yale, like secret magical societies. So yeah, my favorite Lee book now, but we'll see how the ending of book two finishes because it's the ending of her series that gets me being like, oh, maybe these weren't my favorite. You can also see how much Lee has improved in her writing when you compare this to Shadow and Bone. So she wanted to rewrite the Grisha trilogy now. Like, I wouldn't say no, I would pay for that. Also, Amazon, hi, I'm available if you want me to play Doors in the series. Then we have A Love Oz YA, and that is What the Woods Keep by Kutcher de Pissera. And I gave this four stars, but like, I am annoyed that this is a standalone because I need more. This is a story of a girl who inherits her childhood home on the day of her 18th birthday, and then she heads back to her childhood hometown, 
and shit is weird. It's full of mystery and dark magic and the best friend that you meet right at the beginning of the book comes along for the ride. I loved it, I was intrigued by what was going on and I needed the answers. I loved all the magic and it ends up being like this magic meets science thing which was really cool. Katja is also local and super sweet and I can't wait to read more by her. Then we have Blinding Night by Chantel Gowdry. I gave this one four stars. I received an ebook copy of this one because I was part of the cover reveal for book two. I read Hades and Persephone retelling and that was all I needed to know to be in. In this story, Persephone keeps getting reincarnated into these girls and Hades finds her in our modern day girl, Summer. This is my favorite book by Chantel so far. It was really fun and it's set in Greece and I really want to go to Greece. From there, Hades can come take me as his queen for the underworld or I can live out my best Mamma Mia life. Like I'm happy either way. Anyways, there's strong Akatar Court of Dreams vibes, which is cool. I think Chantel is really good at writing urban fantasy because there were so many pop culture references thrown in and I love myself some pop culture references. I did feel like this was only like half of a book though. Like it was quite short and, and just ended quite abruptly and I know this is the first in a series and I don't know how long book two is yet but you know I feel like maybe book one and two could have worked as one. And then I read Serpent and Dove by Shelby Morin. Fuck I loved this book, I gave it five stars. I was hooked from the moment I found out the premise, a witch and a witch hunter are forced into marriage. Like enemies to lovers, give me all oh, the hate to love content. Lou has now become one of my all-time favorite characters. She's now up there with Rose Hathaway and Selena Sardothian, so you know I love her. She just has the attitude that I wish I could have, like that confidence though. I flew through this book like I love the setting and the story and the characters and the magic and I need book two. And lastly, we of course have The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. I gave this four stars. I love Faye and Holly Black writes great Faye. You never know what she's gonna do. So when we got near the ending and that big thing happened, I was like, ha, huh, okay. Don't know what I was expecting, wasn't this, but okay, I've accepted this as the ending. But then it changed again. I love Jude and I need a boyfriend so we can do a Jude card and cosplay. I'm super sad that this was so short though. Like I need more content. Like I feel like all the books in this series could have been a bit longer. So maybe not like Sarah J Maas longer, but just a couple of hundred pages added to the series overall would have been nice. So there you go, there are all the books that I read in the spring. Please comment down below if you've read any of these and what your thoughts were. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos.